Hey everyone, this is Chef, and welcome back to Commander Camp. In this installment, we're going to talk about positioning. Now you're likely familiar with positioning from the perspective of someone who follows a command. Stay close enough to their tag that you get boons, but outside of damaging abilities and skill effects. Positioning as a commander is slightly different, however. People in your squad will try and follow your tag, so you're responsible for finding good places to move and push as a group rather than as an individual. We're going to discuss three main components of what good positioning is, then we'll look at a single fight and review it from the perspective of each of those three components. So, let's get started. First is positioning with respect to where you can move. When you have more options for where you can move your group, you have better positioning. In an open field fight, on flat ground, you can move in any direction you want. You and players in your squad are able to dodge in any direction in order to get safe from a bomb. Terrain, structures, and water can all disrupt this movement, which limits the options that you and your squad have available. The most obvious example of a spot that restricts movement is a choke point. This can be a tunnel, a narrow valley between two hills, or a destroyed gate or wall. In these spots, you can only move forwards and backwards, and it's easy to apply damage to a group moving through these spots. But positioning for good movement is more than just choke points. Standing against walls and cliffs, near water, or on top of walls, are all places that restrict potential movement choices. And these are opportunities that a savvy commander can take advantage of if you're paying attention to where you are relative to where enemy groups are. Second, let's talk about positioning with respect to where you can place your camera. Success in World vs. World relies on reaction times, and positioning yourself so that you have faster reaction times than your opponent is an advantage that you can use in your squad. You can give your squad an edge by fighting in places where you can easily see the enemy approaching, but the enemy has to move or rotate their camera in order to see you. You can do this, for example, by positioning yourself behind a wall or around a corner, so that approaching enemy groups don't know that you're there without the use of a Warclaw Sniff ability. But you can utilize camera positioning during a fight as well. Imagine that your group is at the top of a staircase, so that an enemy group coming up the stairs has to turn their cameras 180 degrees in order to cast their skills and do damage behind them. Or, you can hug the left or right side of a choke and deal damage into the entrance as an enemy group moves through. In these cases, your group has clean camera angles, while the group moving through the choke has to turn their cameras in order to damage you. This takes time, even if it's a quarter of a second, and you can use that time as a commander to get a faster reaction and a better damage spike. Last, let's talk about positioning with respect to where you can cast your skills. In other words, your line of sight. Line of sight disrupts damage between two groups, and you can use this to give your squad an opportunity to refresh cooldowns, heal up, or draw an enemy in to a more favorable spot, such as through a choke point. Along with camera placement, these spots give your group an opportunity to cast skills easily, while making it difficult for enemy groups to cast skills on your group in return. There's also spots where you can utilize line of sight favorably, depending on what professions you have in your squad. Groups that I command tend to have pulls from Reapers using Greatsword 5, and Chronomancers using Focus 4 which means that positioning our group underneath an enemy, where you can utilize these skills to pull enemies apart from one another, is a powerful position for us to be in. You may also want to be aware that good positioning for some of these criteria can be bad positioning for other criteria. For example, taking the high ground in a fight usually confers a better positioning advantage with respect to movement and camera angles. However, there are a number of skills that don't work very well when cast downhill, like Earthshaker, Warrior's Hammer F1 skill, or uphill, like Revenant's Coalescence of Rune, Hammer 2. In these spots, your line of sight can be disrupted for some professions in your squad, even though you have other positioning advantages. This last fight brings all these ideas together. I'm going to play it once in real time, and then we'll take it apart piece by piece, in order to look at how each of these three positioning topics get utilized in a real fight. If you want to, take some notes while you're watching, and then compare what you noticed about this fight to what I discuss about it afterwards. Push out three, two, one, stab up, Damn. pushing out. Wells on me, three, two, one, wells on me here, wells on me here, good split, good split. Hold this choke, do not go in yet, do not go in yet. Holding on me, holding on me. We take portal in in three, in two, in one, taking portal in again. Dodge once, once you get inside and bomb your feet again, bomb your feet again, bomb your feet again. Hold on Holding on me, holding on me, holding on me. Let them go around the house, it'll break their line of sight. Just hold on me, hold on me. On tag, on tag. Pushing left side in two, one. Pushing left side now to help these downs. Pushing left side to help these downs. 
Hold on me, hold on me. Pushing in in three, two, one. Push in left, dodge once, dodge once, dodge once. Into their tail, into their tail. We got downs here and tuck around the house for line of sight. Tuck around the house okay. for line of sight. Firefield's on me, empowers on me. Refreshing, refreshing, refreshing. We push back out. Three, two, one. Straight to bottom of stairs, straight to bottom of stairs. Dodge once, bomb your feet. Wells on me, berserk on me, berserk on me, berserk on me. They're split here, they're split here. We need to convert this group right now. Pushing upstairs in two, one. Upstairs now, upstairs, 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 upstairs. upstairs. Refresh and push right back down in three, two, one. Dodge back downstairs, back downstairs, out of these downs, back downstairs, out of these downs. We convert all these downs right now. Convert everything down here, everything down here, everything down here. Pushing back up now in five, four, three, two, one. Last stab go, last super speed go, right into them. Dodge one, dodge one, dodge one. All other damage your feet here, all other damage your feet. Convert all of this, convert all of this. Great job. Great, great job. All the way across wall here, across wall. Before we get into the specifics of the fight, let's first establish who's here. Our squad is 34 people, and we also have Tyrion next to us commanding for bomb with another 15. I'm assuming there's a few people around who aren't in either squad, so let's say that our side has 60 total. And according to the ARC DPS report for this fight, which is linked in the video description, Red's group is 65, mostly from the guild BP. Red's group has just broken down the gate at North Inner Dreadfall Bay, generating a choke point that neither group is willing to push through directly. Because we own this keep, however, we have a second option. We can also push out of the portal, skipping the choke entirely. We stability up for a major push, and we take the portal outside to hit their backline, catching a number of people who react too slowly. This spot favors us for two reasons. Red's group pushes in as we take the portal out, which means they now have to go back through the choke if they want to re-engage us. And they have to turn their cameras around completely in order to apply damage to us as we move behind them. Once we've converted our initial downs, we stack up again, and prepare to do the same thing back into the objective. This time, as we push in, Red's group moves directly into us, and both groups clash. As this fight develops, you can see that Red's group is becoming fractured. The group to the east, in front of us, has a good position with respect to line of sight, and movement using the building to our right to mitigate incoming damage. But the group to the north, on our left, is in a pretty bad spot with respect to movement options. Their backs are against a wall, so they can't dodge backwards, and moving northwest is risky because it takes them through the choke point of the destroyed gate, as well as through our own group. Their safest option is to move to the east to stack up with the rest of the red group, so we push hard onto them to try and prevent this from happening. Unfortunately, this move is a little late, and we don't capitalize for you, allowing the two red groups to restack. As they push into us again, we've now used major support cooldowns for three pushes, and likely need a brief refresh to get skills back. So we take red spot to the east, and then tuck around the corner of the house to break up line of sight and minimize incoming damage. You can see just how few damaging fields are on the ground where we're standing, allowing us to heal up and prepare for our next push. On this next push, red fragments again, with some players pushing to where we were, and other players remaining at the bottom of the stairs. We quickly capitalize off of this, giving Chase up the stairs to prevent this group from making it back to the rest of their squad. That squad then pushes up the stairs behind us, leaving several downs in their tail, so we immediately go back down to convert them. Finally, we push up the stairs one more time, placing ourselves in a choke point and hurting our line of sight on the way up, but Red has expended a number of cooldowns at this point, and lost several players so we're able to win the fight at this spot regardless, thanks to a numbers advantage and a cooldown advantage. Positioning is one of the most important elements of commanding, and there's much more to it than what we've discussed here. We'll almost certainly revisit these topics, as well as introduce some new ones, when good footage presents itself. In the meantime, when you're thinking about your own commanding in close fights, it's worth considering where you were standing, and whether it helped your squad or hurt your squad, in the same style that we've used here. But until then, I think that's enough to give you a head start on considering positioning as a commander in your own groups. If you enjoyed this video and you want to see more like it, consider liking the video and subscribing to the channel. And if you think there's something important about positioning that I haven't covered, why not leave a comment and let me know? If you have some footage that you want to talk about, you can also join the Discord. I'm working on setting up a footage review channel where we can all discuss and learn from one another. And finally, I command every Friday on Twitch if you'd like to watch me command in real time and ask questions there. But until then, I've been Chef, and enjoy the rest of your day.